There's Harry. What flavor are those glasses? Yeah, they're great. Okay. Seven o'clock. So I can't get my iPad to connect to my laptop. So I've lost um, some mobility to do some things I wanted to do. I don't know why. Maybe I should have tried it before 645. Um, but my pal Harry is on with us right there. Moto G. I think I've already got you unmuted, buddy. Have you got anything you, uh, you got anything you can show us tonight? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Tonight I had planned for a educational couple of minutes. And um, what it would consist of would be how to use a micro torch and how to make a cab curtain out of brass. And I, I have that little tripod that uh, you so kindly gave me last week. And I'm gonna put this puppy in the tripod right now and um, see what my field of vision, my field of view is. So hang on for one second. Okay, uh, can you, now can you see what I'm doing with my hands? No, nope. we can see the lights well. above you. Okay, what am I? You gotta flip the uh, screen around. I got to twist the screen somehow. Hit the um, little button on the screen and flip it. There I can see you. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hang on. Um, hang on. I got ahead of myself. There you got okay. it. All right, here we go. Hang on. Now I'm back into the tripod. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yes, and yes. Okay, good. Oh, man, it's cool. All right, now, can you see my hands, what I'm doing with that? Hey. Yes, sir. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the micro torch. Everybody see this thing? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's a burns matic torch. I bought it at Home Depot. Uh the first thing I do, it's a, it's a butane torch. The first thing I do when I get it is I remove the childproof lock, which sits up here. I'm not going to go through that, but you basically have to take a couple screws out, pull the head off, and pull the little springs and retainers off that are in here so you can turn this thing on and off real easy. So here it goes on. Okay. There's the flame. Everybody see that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, you don't have a lot of adjustment here. It's zero. That's the minimum, maximum. You don't have a lot of adjustment, but you don't have to pay a lot of money for it either. Okay, you can buy better ones from like Micromark or more adjustable ones, but this one suits my purposes. Um, now, you charge it up with one of these guys here. This is a butane canister, and you stick it in here and charge it up, okay? That's how you charge it. And um, you can do pretty fine work with this. Uh, you can do the same work you can do with an iron. And you don't have to plug it in. And it just takes a little bit of practice and skill. So the first thing I want to do is show you what I make cab curtains out of. This is, can you see this? K&S brass? Yep. I don't know where the heck, to, I don't know which one of these lenses on the phone is what's doing this. That's doing um, great, Harry. It's doing great. Okay. I can't, there's a bunch of, there's four lenses on it. I don't know which one is catching this. This is part number 258, brass shim material, k and I'm sure Steve can get it for anybody that wants it. It comes in a small package, uh, one thousandths, two thousandths, three thousandths, and five thousandths shim brass. Okay, and uh, this is what I use for cab curtains and cab awnings. Right okay. now, 
The next special tool that I use, which is something uh, this might be of interest. I got this one from Hobby Lobby. And this is a special pair of pliers that they use to make jewelry with or beads, beadwork. And it's got two rounded tips on it. And I take this little thing like this and twist it around like this. Okay. And this is now the curtain hanger, like a shower curtain hanger. And that's his little parts right here. Can you see these that I'm touching right now? Yeah. Okay. Are they in the field of vision? Here's a bunch of them I made earlier. So I make that and then I cut it off with my my Home Depot needle nose pliers. And this is a hanger with a cab curtain. Okay. Now let's let's solder one and show you how it works. A very important part is this stuff right here. It's called OD, O A T E Y, liquid solder flux. It is what I've determined to be the best kind of flux to do this kind of work. It's liquid and it, it, it covers things really well. I dilute it half and half. So if I squirt five drops in here of this, I'll squirt in five drops of water. 50-50 water, okay? Now, I take this stuff and I paint it on the two surfaces to be soldered, which is that, all these little surfaces here. And when I heat it, you don't apply the heat directly to the thing you're going to solder. It'll, it'll, um, it'll char the, the flux and it won't make a good joint. So I apply the heat a little further downstream, right about like that. And heat it up, heat it, heat it, heat it, heat it, heat it, heat it, heat it. There. Okay. And then I quench it with water. It also drives off the the char that it formed from the the flux, I'm wiping it off with my fingers. Okay, now these are four cab curtains. What do I do next? I take this thing and I fan fold it like this. This is brass, okay? Fan fold it this way, this way, that way, that way, and that way. Okay, so there's there's a cab curtain almost ready. Here's one that I made earlier that's been all cleaned off. Like Tiffany. The next, hey, that, did I question? Okay. This is a pair of um, wire strippers. Now what I've done to these is I've I've made them blunt in here so that they won't cut. All they'll do is squeeze, and they'll squeeze 360 degrees. So I take this, and I put a, a crimp into the cab curtain, so it looks like it's been tied up, okay? Is, is that coming in okay? Yeah. Okay, now, so there's a cab curtain. Now, to tie the cab curtain up, I use this. Now this is, I guess it's number 14 gauge wire that I get from Home Depot. It's stranded wire, copper core. <laughs> and I took my X-Acto knife and I ran it right down the insulation like this and then pulled the wire out. And cut it off. And here's the whole nail for cab curtains. Okay, it's just 14 games. I don't know. Why would I do that? We didn't have it all the way in. I did too, just like I was saying. Now I'm going to roll this thing around the cab curtain. 
Roll it up. Tight. And I'm going to cut off the excess with a pair of scissors. And I'm going to dab some flux on here. And hit this with some heat. Keep it moving. Got to keep the heat moving. And there it is. There is a partially built cab curtain. Now, here is a cab curtain that I made earlier today um, using that technique. Here's a finished one, which is going to go on this camel back. It's going to go right there. Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Now, I'm going to paint these curtains. I'm going to dip them in lacquer thinner to melt off any impurities. And then I'll immediately paint them with Rust-Oleum Auto Primer on both sides. And then the color that I use to represent canvas is, is Rust-Oleum Bone, B-O-N-E, or Fossil, F-O-S-S-I-L. They're about the same color of tan. And it looks just like, um, Canvas, a little bit, of, little bit shiny, but you can dull it down with some testers dull coat. The solder that I use is Radio Shack, part number 6400035. Everybody see that? Harry, can you tell us where you get the flux? Uh, I get the flux from my local uh, plumbing supply store. Um, call ahead first, make sure they have it. They don't all carry it. And um, it's um, part number 30106. 30106. But I guess you can get it online too. I never went online. So it's uh, four ounces. Already liquid solder flux. Now, um, People will say, hey, you're using a torch. Isn't that like using a sledgehammer to kill a, a fly? So, no, it's not. Um, once you get used to the torch, you can do very fine work, which I'm about to do. And now here's some of that little tiny wire. Can you, everybody see that wire? Yeah. Yeah. Is that coming through okay? This little tiny wire? Yeah. These are actually strands of wire. Oh, it's got to be number 32, 34. It's pretty thin stuff. Well, I'm going to solder these two together. How's that sound with this big ass torch? Let's see what happens. I'm going to tin them both. Uh, I'm sorry, flux them both. And I'm going to tin one of them. There you go. And this one's, this one's tin. Can you see the solder on the end of it? I hope. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to put these two together. Hang on. Let me get them both holding still here. There you go. Okay, so you can do some pretty fine stuff with a, a little mic. It doesn't matter. You gotta, you have to be able to control the distance from the flame to the work, the size of the flame, and then the duration of time that the flame is applied to the work. And you can use these torches. You can solder rails together. You can solder wires to your rails. Um, here's another thing that I do with it. This thing right here is a resin three-dimensional window shade for a passenger car. Now, I've marked this thing off for a Lionel um, heavyweight 
I did mark. There it is. For a Lionel heavyweight car. A few minutes ago, there's little marks on there. Okay. Now, right now, the resin's pretty, pretty crisp and um, brittle. So I'm going to take this puppy right here and aim this at the at the resin. It'll start to curl over when it gets hot enough. Don't just play it on it. You got to keep got to keep the torch moving. A little, little bit to that side. A little more to that side. Okay. And cut it. Cuts like paper. Boom. Okay. So here's four window shades now. And they're going to go into this car right here. Can you all see that? Yeah. Good. Yeah. And I'll mount them and they're just like that. And that's how they look. And that's how I cut them. So, and there's after you, I use the torch to do that. I wouldn't use the torch to force dry paint, but I've, I, there's more and more applications that I can use this thing for. Now I've got another, here it is here. Okay, now this is a, um, these are uh, the over the, over the window curtains for this camelback. And as you can see, I've already wrapped the wires around this one. So I'm going to solder these little wires on there, too. Uh, they're little retaining wires, which would be, I guess, rope back in the old days in the prototype to uh, keep that curtain from unfurling when the engineer did not want it to do that. So I'm going to get... Can you see what I'm doing here? Is this yeah. on the... Okay. One... Two, three. That's all it takes. And I'll squirt it to get the, the char off. My there you go. So that's an over the window curtain. I'm sorry. Windows. Windows. What'd you call this? The curtains go back there. This could be like a awning, an over window awning. And that's gonna go right there. When this camel, see that, and that's that's what that. And when that's painted canvas, it looks very real, very prototypical. So that's um, usage of a torch and a little uh, a little short lesson on cap curtain. Are there any? Harry, is uh, there any variation on the, the curtains on the back of the cabs from railroad to railroad? Have you picked up anything like that? Um, generally speaking, okay, I lost everybody here. What's going on? There you go. I'm with you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Generally speaking, a camelback is unique because it's got a overhang, so the the rear curtain would sit here. Now, the name of the game was to put the, the, um, the fireman in a protected environment because the back of the cab was usually open here. So there'd be two curtains here and here, and they'd pull these curtains forward, and then the rear curtain would drop down. And then when he wanted to grab coal and shovel it in, he'd go underneath the rear curtain and throw it in there. and um, there are also instances where these rear curtains go from side to side and they would go across the back of the cab this way and close up like a shower curtain. Um, they're the two variations that I've seen. And then there's the awning, which you don't see them very much on passenger engines unless they're really slow passenger engines like Santa Fe or Southern Pacific that went across mountains in the desert in hot environments. Uh, you see them mostly on freight engines because if you're in 80 miles an hour and um, you hang your curtain out, and that's going to blow off okay? or blow on your head or something. Um, so the curtain, which is around here somewhere, right here, that goes here like so. So that's the three variations of curtain. Thank you, Harry. Harry, I got two questions for you. Sure. 
what what uh what are you using to make the uh curtain rod what are you using what's the product you're using for that oh, okay this is can you see that in front of the camera yep. there mm -hmm. that is um piano wire k and s piano wire okay uh uh point zero probably point zero one zero uh, ten thousands twenty thousands uh and the real the real small ones that i use for the um wind deflectors is probably point zero zero five five thousands and uh steve can get that for you it's a and s product and they sell it three foot length and you can buy like five bundle of five and it's very inexpensive okay Okay. Now, how do you mount the cab curtain once in the engine in the locomotive once you have it done? Okay. Now, what I'll do is here's the curtain here. Now, notice how it's bent in here and here. Okay. What I'll do is drill two holes in the back of the cab corresponding to this point and that point and i'll spread these tangs apart and stick it in and they'll they'll clamp it tight when they go in and vice versa coming back in. so it's removable yet it'll it's spring held in by spring tension and that's why i use piano wire because if i use brass wire like this the brass wire would it doesn't have memory and you bend it one time and it'll it won't go back to where it was. So all these handrails and these are all these are all piano wire on all these engines to give them strength and uh, memory of their position. Any other questions? What is your secret to the windows in the front of the cab? Well, hang on. I'll get them and show them to you. I'm going to go over and get them. I just got to ship one of these things in last week. Ah. Okay. Here are the front windows here. Now, let me, let me unfurl one. These are castings made from my own patterns many years ago. Uh, right there. The things that are in my finger are called sprues. They get cut off. And then these two little things up here are actual hinges. And you can see, here, here's the, hang on. Here's a dime, right? And so this ain't very big. <laughs> And I put a little 0 0.05 piano wire through these. Let me get it where you can see it. These two little tiny holes here. I drill them out with a 70, number 72 drill. And um, then you have to drill two holes in the front cab wall up here. And just poke these little suckers in. Um, easier said than done. Take some practice to do that. So they're hard, they're hard to mount. The side ones are much easier to mount. And as I found much to my dismay, on some of the uh, vision engines, the handrails, well, on all the vision engines, the handrails are the um, Bluetooth. Well, these little suckers go into the cab wall and the little tiny wires are soldered to these inside the cap. And there's a rubber grommet because they can't touch anything metal or it, it grounds out the antenna. And um, unfortunately, they're right in the same area is where the little wind deflector goes. And you got to be real careful when you draw those holes that you don't short out the, um, the, the um, Bluetooth antenna on a, on a vision antenna. So that's a note of a caveat. 
Any other questions? Well, go ahead. one more. Yeah, no, I just wanted to ask in the window frame, what do you use for glass? Or you don't? For these little guys here? Yeah. Hang on, somebody sent me a. These are uh, K and S used to have a subsidiary called Special Shapes, and they made the most wonderful little special. They were machined; they weren't stamped brass parts. Brass. Um, they weren't castings. They were actually machined little parts, and these little guys here are. 90 degree angle. I think they're 132nd 90 degree angle. And so I took those and bent them to the shape you can see. And then the two little hinges are, these are precision scale parts that came off another part and I soldered them on and then I put sprues on it and I sent them off to either precision scale or to Dave Schock a valley brass and bronze foundry and he makes these things for me these things by the way cost 250 a piece these little parts here for him to cast this is two fifty two dollars and fifty cents the little ones are two dollars for him to cast these he does very good work and he works quick um but that's how we do that any other questions How about the cab? Um, I mean, how about the window uh, shades? Wonderful, Harry. Okay. Good deal. Thank you, buddy. All right. Thank you. I'll talk to you guys next week. Okay. Thank you. You got it, man.